Good morning, gentlemen and ladies. Today, my video will be about my Honda Generator EB, like Echo Bravo 6500X for cold climate. And uh, but before doing that, <laughs> I need to move some stuff. I've got the boat tractor. I need to move it out. Uh, my two bicycle, my bumper brand new bumper that I bought and which I'm gonna make a video about it uh, oof, I don't know when but sometime um, I, I need to attach my back on the tractor clean the stuff and then re-extract <laughs> the generator from there so what I will do just for the fun to put some music I'm gonna put the camera in the corner there and uh, you will see me working for the <laughs> next uh, I don't know an hour <laughs> to remove the, my generator from there all right so uh it will be a quite a warm day today uh the calling for 30 degrees celsius and uh, right now we are we are at 88 uh, percent of humidity and uh, my goal today is uh, yeah to make like you see i have all my uh, nice book uh have important information to pass to you all right so <laughs> Let's do that, and I will have my dog at the end of the video, all right? Because right now for them it's too warm, all right? So let's do that. Cheers! <laughs> yes, James, that's from uh, Kilinic Country. He's, uh, he's back doing videos also, so yes, I will check my health before starting my tractor, and yes, I will read the manual. <laughs> See you, James!
right, folks. Uh, if you have any question about the, the backhoe connection into the tractor, uh, please do. Um, I had uh, one good folk ask me, he had a prime to connect the hoses. Uh, I hope the description, I never found the description again, the, not the description, but the question or the comment. So if you're listening, please, uh, I give you a lot of tricks how to empty the pressure of the hoses from the, uh, the forward loader. The forward loader can pressurize the system. If you put the uh, bucket in angle and you let it down, the bucket pressure will pressure the system. So maybe it's linked to that. Or either uh, the backhoe itself, some of the hydraulic, is, it's on, there's weight on it and that rise up the pressure. So. All right, so as you can see, I'm almost done uh, doing the uh, so clean up. It's been a year since I put the generator in there. I remember very well, it was the uh, end of May when I arrived here, the beginning of June. And, uh, hey boy, it's more than one year. <laughs> it's one year and two months. <laughs> so we're on the 22nd of July today, so. All right, so let's uh, extract the generator from there. That is very interesting. <laughs> I never thought I have a small. Uh, it was a beginning of it because it's all clean. I guess uh, he didn't like my uh, the little. Uh, it's not a squirrel. Probably a little mouse. But he didn't like my activity, my uh, daily activities in my garage during the long winter. So it started, but uh, let's say then, uh, yeah, there's no poo at all. So. <laughs> That's why you have to keep their garage clean. All right, as you can see, it's my uh, Honda Generator EB6500X. And uh, that generator is equipped with a cold climate technology. So I bought it in, uh, in 2011. So I have been uh, having it since, <whistles> since uh, well, <laughs> 11 years, around 2022. So um, now before attempting any type of maintenance, what I would do first of all is dusting off. And how I dust off, I just take a rag and clean it. So I do that and uh, yeah, stick around. All right, so this video uh, will be uh, about the Honda electric generator, the EB6500X. It's uh, with, equipped with the cold climate uh, technology. And uh, I'm testing it in cold uh, weather environment and wet cold weather environment and no wet uh, weather environment. However, the generator always been covered or protected from the uh, these elements. All right, and uh, we're gonna going to do a quick review of the uh, of the uh, owner manual uh, and uh, maintenance uh, manual, basically. All right, so now um, before I start, it's gonna be, I'm gonna, there's gonna be a two part. I'm gonna talk about the book briefly. I'm not gonna try very hard. And then I'm gonna talk about the uh, maintenance on the generator as we speak uh, with the, in, in, in accordance with the manual. All right, so stick around. I need to change my battery. All right, cheers. All right, um, one thing I want you uh, if once one thing I would like you to remember two things I would like you to remember about my video uh, first of all uh, about grounding your generator so there's a grounding point here as I'm pointing 
always ground it separately from the ground system or whatever you're feeding the house your garage or uh, like a, an external uh, it could be a generator and uh, a generator but uh, something directly connected to your generator but always ground it all right it's mentioned in the book and also like i like to mention to you is my stepfather uh, he used to be uh, a technician uh, who uh, worked with the, one of the biggest generator supplier maintainer uh, in Canada and he did that for the last 25 years uh, here in the province of Quebec but he was covering a, a large uh, territory the maritime and here in Quebec uh, and trust me that gave him uh, a lot busy and uh, yeah that's one thing he, he told me always ground your generator now the second thing I would like you to remember is if your generator run on gas, all right, always use non-alcohol, non-ethanol gas. Always use on super high octane gas with the whatever I can have. And uh, here it's in uh, Petro Canada. There's a. Uh, I will let you know how octane. Uh, gas is uh, I'm really bad with number but I think it's 92 or 93 octane and I put I put an additive uh, also to protect the, the fuel uh, usually I run it every six months and I put a load on it okay a good load for at least an hour so that way it's uh, it's good for the generator the generator part of it and also uh, for the whole system there's various tests you can do so please if you have something to remember i want you to remember is always ground separately from whatever you're feeding the generator with and use the best uh, fuel you can have and that's work also with uh, diesel too all right make sure your diesel is well treated and no water and run it at least uh, twice a year uh, and i do the oil change every uh, six months or a year with synthetic oil and uh, yeah so that's a brief resume for the video the rest I, that's what I want you to remember do the proper maintenance and I'm gonna talk about it all right so let's do that <laughs> all right so when you buy a generator by the way that generator in 2011 in July it cost me three thousand eight hundred Canadian dollar all right tax included everything the, the prep it was ready to, uh, to, uh, to be used the guy did as I was going to uh, to bring it he said you know what I'm going to prep it for you I'm gonna put oil everything so uh, it's gonna be uh, he, he removed the box he had the box on the side showing me that he was open I was ready to plug it he was an outstanding uh, dealership he was back in Mercier uh, that's south uh, south shore of Montreal now about the book all right the book is very very well made the only thing bad I have to say about the book it cover many type of generator like the as the EB in all the uh, the series like the 3800 the 5000 and the 6500 and then there's the EM uh, 3,800, 5,000, and 6,500. Uh, this is the the big difference. So I'm gonna focus on my model, but the book, yeah, it covered, uh, and I give you tricks how to deal with this various type of generator. You just need to read. All right, so the page, the main page is like this. You have the generator, and also, yeah, the EM doesn't have the package with the wheels and the handles as you see here. All right. Now, if you turn the page, like I, I, I put the I put markers on my page. Of course, there's always the, the safety aspect of it. But uh, the only thing I want you to remember, uh, again, read and understand the owner manual before operating the generator. Failure to do so could result in personal injury and equipment and damage. All right. Now the all the. Uh, safety warnings about operating an engine in closed environment so you know make sure it's ventilated it's very important because a lot of people do die every single year 
many, many, many in Canada and US or in, across the world because they don't take the fact that that thing is a combustion engine, could be a propane, could be diesel, could be a natural gas. When it works in a closed environment, it will be toxic for you and death will occur. So make sure you have a proper ventilation. All right, so that's why it's all about that safety instruction. All right. Now there's the, uh, it's all about the safety instruction. And now for the, uh, my markers, and that's what I do. This is for other type of generator. So I just fold it, put a marker, and then I flip it. And here it's, it said everywhere, uh, all the parts is all uh, uh, well indicated. All right. It's very well made. So do, do, do like I did, uh, I'm doing. So uh, the page, you don't need to know. I just fold it, put it a sticker, and that's it. And then put markers. If you need a quick reference when you're using it, at least it's going to be easier to uh, you. See, this one I don't need, so I crossed it. Uh, there's a good generator will be equipped with an oil alert system. So if that generator is, uh, is uh, starting to drinking oil or burning oil or leaking oil, there's a switch in the oil pan which uh, will uh, shut off the uh, generator right away if it's missing oil. And the under generator are very well known for that. Not for the very well equipped and dependable generator all right uh, now there's a uh, various stuff for the eb only for this model i mean for the ground the gfi uh, gfi uh, gfci recyclable for ground uh, fault circuit all right everything is there uh, now for the oil there's the pre-operating checklist you make sure then, uh, first of all, remove oil filter cap, make sure the oil is in there. Uh, after that, running the engine with instruction oil can cause serious engine damage. The oil alert system will automatically stop the engine. So like I told you, all right. And the manual, by the way, I always read it at least once a year, just to bring me stuff. Uh, they're talking about the, how to fill it up, all right. There's the fuel filter on the top here. There's the uh, fuel indicator on the top here too. Uh, now they talk about gasoline containing oil, fuel system damage or engine performance problem resulting from use of the fuel that contains alcohol is not covered under the warranty. All right, so make sure you don't use uh, alcohol and uh, they do not use gasol that contain more than 10% of ethanol. So for me, in my book, I always use non-alcohol, non-ethanol gas. I always use high octane pure gas, all right? Yes, it's, it's more expensive, but I really like my engine clean and the carburetor too, all right? Now there's uh, all the explanation for the hair filter, how to open it. For hair filter is very important. You can wash it, all right, with the soupy water. It's well... Uh, and don't use fuel to wash it all right uh, it's very take the time to read it and uh, again I didn't I didn't need this uh, five page or I just uh, fold it together now EB, uh, EB uh, types how to uh, first of all you put the circuit breaker at off you turn the, uh, the, the fuel valve at on and how to start it basically then you pull the choke you put the uh, engine switch to on then you put the auto throttle to off and uh, they even told you how to grab the uh, the handle uh, and everything like you put your left handle of that and the right you pull it all right don't let it go uh, bring it back there's a lot of good trick when it's running then you close the choke then you can put the uh, auto throttle uh, switch on and uh, they even talk uh, this generator they are made for across the world, all right? So they talk about carburetor modification for high altitude operation. And there's a, it, there, there's a good, uh, oh boy, that's, there's a lot of uh, information about that. Uh, generator use, be sure, all right? And again, it's related with uh, the ground. All right, on page 34. Be sure to ground the generator when they're connected to an equipment grounded, all right? It's very important. So the GFI will work and also uh, to protect the, the, the generator itself, all right? 
And of course, they talk about do not overrate your generator. If that thing can run at 5,000 uh, watts, all right, don't put 7,500. It can go at 6,500 for a minute, uh, I think. But there's also the, uh, they talk about the distance for the cable you can run into it, all right? Uh, now they talk about AC application for that type, it, all the information. I'm not gonna go too much in detail for you folks on how to connect it. Uh, a big warning, if you want to connect it to your house, uh, ask a, if you're not uh, well aware or if you're not a technician, please contact a local electrician. It will inform you how to do it and everything. For me, myself, I made, uh, I'm very well aware about the electricity since I was working on electricity system, on various type of electricity system on the aircraft. And uh, so I'm, I have no problem. So I made connection for running on my uh, small welders. I made connection to run it on my garage, on my house. And uh, yeah, that's why I'm, uh, I have no problem for me uh, for doing that. I'm looking for connection somewhere, yeah. So this is the uh, the connection that I made for uh, connected to uh, to my well uh, my welder. If you guys know, I'm gonna put the link in the description uh, when I was making my uh, deck, uh, my steel uh, frame deck. Uh, I used my generator to uh, to give uh, give power to the to my welder, and that video do is doing very well. By the way, I was very surprised. All right. Uh, they talk about the, the main circuit, like you can use 120 only or 240 and 120, so the, it can be using uh, those two. So this is the, the 120, 240 or the uh, 30 amp uh, for uh, like an RV, uh, 120, all right? And everything, uh, yes, one thing is missing on that book. They always talking, okay, make sure how to shut down, you bring, just gonna give everything, but they don't let, they don't inform you about cooling down. Cooling down is very important. So you uh, you put the auto throttle, uh, you, you close the circuit breaker and then uh, the generator will drop because there's no uh, demand. Let it cool down for at least one minute and then you, uh, you just shut it down, okay? So that way uh, it's not the engine, it's air cool. So it, 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 it gives the time to, uh, to, uh, to cool down basically. They talk about uh, to turn it off after, all right? So the maintenance part of it, and I'm very sorry for the length of my videos about the maintenance. Uh, it's just, for me, it's quite important. Please do, again, take the time to read the book, mark, make, do marker, highlight stuff. That's how you learn uh, how to take care of the property to your equipment because they are not cheap. It's almost four thousand dollar, and now I, I I didn't look at the price, but it must be higher. I'm pretty sure for the same type of generator. Uh, now the maintenance a part of it. All right, they talk about the emission control system information, uh, the problem who, who may affect the emission. Now the what I like is the maintenance schedule. Everything is right there. I highlight like everything. For me, by the way, I change the oil every 24 hours, no matter what, all right? Uh, by, by the book, the first, the first 20 hours, you do the oil change, and after, they said it's uh, every 100 hours or six months. Well, sorry, for me, as per my uh, stepfather was telling me, he said, change the oil every 24 hours, you will have that engine for life and use synthetic oil, all right? <laughs> so that's what I'm doing, and I think after 11 years, I'm doing pretty good. So, uh, and then they're talking about the uh, spark plug and everything, and I'm gonna show, the, uh, show you that in, the, in detail, okay? Uh, they talk to you how to change the oil. Uh, there's a nice diagram, everything, all the picture is very well main, uh, made, and it's really easy. So I'm, uh, after the, the explanation of the book, I'm gonna show you in detail where uh, where everything is on the generator. So let's turn the page. They're talking about the sediment ball. Everything is there. How to remove it? How to uh, to clean the uh, the air filters? 
how to attach it properly. That generator was not bring with the mover. I bring it in my trailer, so yes, I did attach it very well, as per show in the image. Uh, they even tell you about the uh, the storage. When I store it, I always well I always store it after I use it. So I empty the uh, carburetor ball, all right, the drain the screw. Then I uh, I lock the pressure so all the valve are closed, and I put oil in the in the piston also to uh, make sure the piston rings are not rusting. I even oil the spark plug. So I'm gonna show you that in detail. There's a troubleshooting list. There's also all the, the dimension, the weight, uh, like that thing is not, I was surprised the weight it was, uh, where is it? Da, 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 da. it uh, dry mass without any fuel is 219 pounds or 99.6 kilogram. So uh, it's, it's heavy and with f uh, full of fuel, it must be two, uh, at least 20 pounds more. Uh, they tell like, what type of gas engine it is, what type of generator it is, tune up specification. How to torque all the uh, when you you you, uh, you request the kit how to torque the bolt also, and there's the uh, wiring diagram. I really like uh, it's very uh, well made in detail. The the wiring diagram here, and then there's the uh, also for the Under uh, Canada website and for you, for you folks. There's a on the US also a website and there's no and all the rest it's all in French and en français so I went from the English side I learned everything in English for the technical aspect and uh, it's kind of funny because when I was in French I was at the French and the Royal 22 Second Regiment so all my drill is in French <laughs> but everything technical is in English so <laughs> I'm fully bilingual in my mind. <laughs> All right, so now uh, stick around. Uh, we'll, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna do a nice uh, showing every detail of that generator. All right, cheers. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go side by side and then uh, we're gonna talk about it. All right, so from the, the main panel here, so here is the engine uh, switch. So interrupteur de moteur in French. So this is the off, this is the on, all right. It's telling you there's an oil alert. Uh, when the oil level is low, the engine will stop immediately. All right. There's the uh, how to uh, start it also here. Start the engine and everything is all step by step. This is the AC protector disjunction. So before you start the engine, make sure it's at off. There's the auto throttle, make sure it's at off. All right. This is the uh, circuit breaker. This uh, this generate this is the plug here for the 30 amp 120 volt. All right, this is the uh, the 20 amps for the 100 with equipped with the GFI. All right, and here is the uh, for 120 voltage selector or 120 volt with 240 right here. There's the uh, for the connector for the 240 volt 30 amps. This is the grounding point, like I remember, that's where you're gonna attach your ground to the ground, all right? Uh, under here, I put the, this is the oil level. So I'm just gonna remove it. And of course, I've got oil right at the lip and the oil level is quite uh, there. So this is the oil level here. So that's the that's the one you need to check before you uh, you start. All right. Now uh, I forget to mention about the fuel. Make sure you are always keeping all the way full. All right. I'm just gonna move my book aside right here. I'm just gonna open it. All right. And the fuel level. There's a marker. That's where the fuel is. All right. And. Uh, The reason why you want to keep it full, there's no corrosion will occur if the fuel is already at the top. I just need to grab a rag because of course I did spill some fuel. <laughs> Let's uh, clean my little boo-boo. And this is not a plastic gas tank, it's a steel gas tank. So you have to take care of it, make sure uh, 
The generator itself never exposed it to a harsh environment. I always cover it, not cover it with a tarp in, in the garage, yes, for dust. But when it's outside, made made a roof over it. It's very important. Okay. Now I'm gonna switch the generator. Just hold on. All right. So this is the uh, fuel ball, the fuel ball, the fuel valve, which the fuel ball here, which the sediment. All right. I'm taking care so much of the fuel I'm putting in there. Every year that I remove the ball, there's nothing, no dust, nothing. So that's why it pays to double filter your fuel before you, you, uh, you fill it up, all right? So it's very nice. Uh, right here, there's an indication here. That's where you, uh, you pull. This is the choke for your carburetor. The air filter is right here. So just give me one second. So the clamp, you just do that like this. You open it like so, and there's a clamp right here. And this is the uh, the uh, the hair filters. Now on page 56, they told you to first of all uh, you unscrew the uh, you unsnap the air filters, you remove it, you wash the air uh, the air cleaner element with a solution of all salt detergent and warm water. And then you let it clean and dry truly, all right? So you, you squish it and then you let it high dry. After that, you soak the air cleaner element in clean engine oil and squeeze out the excess oil. The engine will smoke during the initial startup if too much oil is left in the air cleaner element, all right? And then you just install it. Now, before, the last time I did it is I, uh, I did exactly like that. So I washed it. And there's a little bit oil remaining. So what I'm going to do is uh, just flip it basically because I want the oil to uh, go, it go down like this. And there's also a, a side of it. So you can see this is uh, towards like that. And this is the outside. And I'm just gonna put and everything here. There's a little bit too much oil. So I'm just gonna take a, a, a rag here and uh, just uh, swipe out the excess of it. All right, and then I'm just gonna reinstall it like so. And uh, since I washed it, I didn't use it at all since the last time, so uh, yeah. Now, for the inside also, I'm just gonna uh, remove the excess of oil. Now, they said in the book, make sure these clamps, make sure they are fully installed. And it's not easy. All right. So this is the clamp here. What you want to do is just make sure it's well clamped on both sides and here. Jeez. I just want you to make sure that it's well clamped, not half clamped, but very well like this. All right. And then you close it. Then you close it and you just close the, uh, the clamp like that. It's very, very important to make sure that do, when you do your pre-starting uh, instruction, make sure it's all uh, closed because it could happen. And we, you leave it. All right, so I'm gonna flip it and see the other side. So in this side here, you have the, uh, of course, the choke. This is when you need choke and when the engine is warm, then you close it. Again, that generator is equipped with cold climate. And it's very important, I forget to mention, for the, close, uh, the cold climate, you need to put the, uh, the uh, ammeter at on. All the circuit breakers need to be on, all right? Now, the spark plug cover is right here. It's really easy, and the spark plug completely at the end in here, all right? What I do for the spark plug, basically, so when I use it, when I finish to use it, I remove the spark plug, I oil the, the, uh, the spark plug thread, then I put two tablespoons of oil and then I just pull the, uh, the of course, it, you make sure you, the switch is off, all right? Make sure the fuel is closed. I don't want any more fuel. You already uh, uh, removed the, uh, the, the fuel. I'm gonna talk to it uh, later on, all right? About that little screw in here, all right? Uh, and then I put the uh, two tablespoons, then I pull, the oil is going everywhere. And then when I pull, I. I I make sure that, oh, I stop when the, 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 the piston is starting to pressurize. The reason I'm talking about that is when it's pressurized, both valves are closed. 
So there's no air contamination or humidity coming up from the carburetor going into the cylinder head. So everything is oiled and it's locked. All right. Then I, I put back the, uh, of course, I already put back the spark plug. I already tied it. And then you just put the, uh, the cover on like so. And it's really easy to do. So just a, cool, a quick repair. After I'm done, I close the valve. I, I flush the, uh, the gas. And uh, then I remove the spark plug, put two, uh, two tablespoons of oil, I pull it and then I stop when it starts to, well, I, I reinstall the spark plug and I stop to lock the, the, the chamber with the valve, all right? Uh, yes, so let's do, oh uh, yes, all right. Now that little, I hope you see that valve here. All right, now that little, this is the carburetor right here, all right? So this is the screw. You need to unscrew to empty the carburetor ball, all right? The, the cinnamon ball, ball, which was the valve, here is the carburetor ball. This is the screw you, you, uh, you unscrew, and here, right under here, where I'm pointing at, right in here, all right? That's where the fuel is going to drop, so you just put the cup here, and that's also a flush drain for the ball there, all right? So then what I do is I re-oil that. I all that screw there and then I put it back. There's a roll ring there. So yeah. I hope that's clear enough with my uh, bubble uh, English speaking ability this morning. So let's do the other side. All right. So here, there's a, here's that's the generator. For the generator, when it runs, all right, it is uh, very important to make sure there's a well ventilated area. The thing I forgot to talk about this. Just hold on. <laughs> This is the exhaust system. This is the where the smoke coming out. It's very, very warm box in here. So please make sure there's, and that thing throw a lot of hot fumes, at least three feet, all right? So when I used to warn it in my barn, my small uh, shed, I was making sure that I had at least three feet of any flammable material because it get warm, all right? If I need it here, I would run it in my garage, but I will do make sure that I have at least three feet of non-flammable material. I always have no fuel. I have no fuel in my garage whatsoever, so there's no flammable material. Well, except for wood and stability. All right, so make sure, yes, make sure the uh, it's all uh, clean and you never put your finger on that, what I'm doing right now, because <laughs> I will burn it, all right? All right, so let's go back to my favorite su uh, subject, the generator. The generator, basically, I just keep it clean. Never exposed to any type of welding because there's live magnets in there, all right? And that's the reason why you want to run it at least once every six months with a big load on it for at least a good 30 minutes so uh, those magnets get uh, reborn, let's say, reactivated, all right? It's very, very important. There's a rubber piece here, make sure it's not dry. I always put some silicone on it, the same type of silicone I'm, uh, I'm greasing my... Uh, uh, I forgot the can, yeah. Anyway, it's a, it's a liquid silicone, just put it there. And uh, the rest here is basically keep it clean, all right? Now for the wheels, I always uh, make sure it's all clean. I just put a little bit drop of oil and that's it. And I always make sure it, uh, here under it's always uh, a nice, uh, good looking condition. There's no corrosion. And uh, yeah, because uh, you want that uh, structure to be uh, sound. All right. All right, so here we go. <laughs> uh, that was my video about my generator, my Honda EB6500X, equipped with the cold climate technology. Just a quick brief note about the cold climate technology is basically from the hot engine, from the cold uh, generator, it's equipped to, uh, to remove the frost and also the generator. So that's why it's important to always have the, uh, when you're running it, always have the, uh, uh, the circuit breaker here at on. Anyway, you need to have it on to, to make it work, all right? So it's a common sense, but to have that uh, cold climate uh, technology, it's well, it's uh, explaining it in the book. You always have to have it on. Now, uh, uh, 
And what else I'd like to talk to you? Yeah, maintenance is the vital factor of our generator. Keep it dry, a dry place, not to expose. Do your proper maintenance, like the book is telling you, read it and do like I do. Basically, personalize your book, read it, take the time. I mean, at 4,000 bucks, and even if you pay a generator at $500, take the time to read, all right? The book is very important. Check the oil level before you start. <laughs> Hello, James. <laughs> All right, I'm just having fun with James. All right, so, and uh, any question about the uh, Honda generator, fill your boat. They have a good dealership. Uh, good uh, look for a dealer uh, on the Canadian uh, website and the US the, uh, with the, the proper uh, dealer uh, and you'll be in business because the, the reason why I chose Honda also is the, uh, to have access on 24 seven on parts for the generator. I have many place technician to fix it properly if in case it need to be fixed. And also it's a very reliable uh, generator. One of the top uh, in the world, uh, according to my stepfather. He used to sell Kohler, uh, many, many various type of generator names I forgot. But uh, even uh, while well, under the name said it all, but it's, uh, I mean, it's, if I had to do it again, uh, I'd probably buy the same, all right? Because with my, it's, uh, it's uh, 6,500, my well was using, uh, I think it was, it was 220, but I think it was 15 amps. And I had three women in the house before, and trust me, I had no problem. I was uh, using, uh, when the water was warm, I was switching the breaker off. I was doing my own uh, uh, electrical uh, switchboard uh, breaker management myself. But uh, please do contact an electrician if you're not uh, well informed or you have any uh, technical technical background with electricity. All right. I'm just gonna show you a trick. Uh, make sure first of all the door is open. There's no electric or fire problem. I have a dedicated uh, garden hose which I cut the proper length. So uh, basically, I throw, I clean the garden hose and I blow air inside, and then I put the, all the garden hose inside the fuel tank. And then on the top of the hose, I just put my thumb and I pull the garden hose out and I just put it in my uh, military uh, jerry can. All right, so that way all the fuel would be empty and at the end I'm trying to removing as much because uh, then I would put fresh gas into it now that old gas what I do it's still very good gas it's only been here now I'm putting it in my car so it's gonna have a high octane uh, uh, gas all right <laughs> uh, this is a trick now for the oil I will uh, I don't have any oil with me <laughs> I was a bad boy so what I would do is I go to Canadian Tower, buy some uh, good uh, synthetic oil, 10W30, like they're asking. You can go with 5W30, uh, synthetic, no problem there. And uh, then I will uh, just show you. It's very easy. Basically, you, you just unscrew that nut here, right in there, and you put it a, a drip tray. It's uh, the same amount. It's one pint of oil, basically. And... Uh, then you drop it, then you put you, where the oil, uh, the oil level check, that's where you put the oil. So I'm just going to do a, a run up, an, an engine run up. I'm not going to put any load on the, uh, on the generator. Uh, well, yeah, anyway, it's just uh, the re main reason why I'm starting the generator is for uh, it would be easier to change the oil. All right. So uh, first of all, I'm just gonna pull the choke right here, right in there. And then you put the switch on, uh, the auto throttle off, breaker off. And if you were doing an electrical, you need to ground the generator. But I'm just gonna start the uh, the, uh, the generator itself. I forget one thing. On this side, I uh, know. Sorry, I forgot. Uh, here, put the uh, the fuel valve on. You see here, this is off. This is on, right in there. <laughs> so I always forget that. We already checked oil level, so we're we're good. 
Of course, the muffler is pointing towards that way. It's uh, far away enough. And uh, like the book is saying, good hand right here, right here, and everything is on. So. restart again because what I need to do is I need to uh, shut off the fuel line so all the, f the fuel line will be empty and then I only have the, uh, this, the not the cinnamon bowl but the bowl for the carburetor to empty so let's start it again on off off no choke because the engine is warm
what I'm going to do now is just uh, unscrew the, uh, the oil. As you can see, the oil is quite clean. <laughs> I'm just gonna. You, you guys are too, uh, too far away. So uh, the oil is really clean. Of course, I, uh, the only time I, uh, you only have the what ten minutes of uh, running. <laughs> Just gonna clean the uh, the washer and in here. While that thing is dropping, I'm gonna show you about the uh, the fuel screw. All right. I hope you were able to see. So this is the little screw here. So you take a screwdriver and you just just hold up. You just unscrew it, and you can see the fuel. getting empty and what I do is I remove I remove it completely and this is the screw here I hope you're able to see it all right just hold on I'm back so what I do is once it finished I just put a little bit more oil in here whoop yeah I just put a little bit more oil whoop I just I just reintroduce it. You guys are able to see it. So right in there, and then just snug. I did a bit talk too much. <laughs> All right. Now for the spark plug, let me get the uh, spark plug. Yeah, that was type two. All right. So uh, I don't have my glasses, but uh, I always check the gap. I know the gap is good on this one. And all right, so I do make sure that part is clean. Then I put some, uh, about two tablespoons of oil. Then I crank it a little, very, very slow. The reason why you're doing that is the oil get oily all around the piston rings and also the piston sleeve also. All right, then, wah, that thing is warm. Wow. Uh, I oil a little bit the uh, spark plug. I'm going to try to do That's gonna be tough. All right, so at the end, now <laughs> I'm just gonna be very gentle. That's it. Not more, not more than, not more than, than that. Let's put the. All right, now the next part. All right, now the de the next part is to make sure that both valves are closed. So right now it's easy. Oh, now it's tight. So that means the uh, it's on the compression on the four stroke. It's, it's the, uh, you know, there's the compression, then the ignition, then the, uh, the vacuum, then the inlet. No, it's the compression, so both valves are closed, all right? So at this point, on that side is done. Now on this side, all the oil has been dropping. 
I will put the uh, on right in here and yes it is warm right now holy smoke just hold up I will put the little seal and just screw it back like so and snug not fucking crazy tight there we go yeah it's roughly a pint of oil a very warm oil holy smoke now let's remove this i'm gonna get the clean rag up all right try to keep that video short so <laughs> so that's gonna be uh, tender the oil that's the oil I'm using for the generator also for the John Deere uh, yeah so I have plenty of it in there in this case I have less power uh, I like to mention I didn't ring my house to connect the uh, generator yet I will do that definitely during my vacation in September somewhere like that all right right now the oil is right at the at the at the edge so I know then it's rather it's the perfect place by the way on the engine itself it shows the oil level, so right now I am at the perfect level. So let's screw that back to get at the back in place. Well, this is it, folks. So you saw the uh, maintenance of my generator. The only thing I didn't see is uh, yes, I should have put a bigger load for a longer time. But after 11 years of uh, good service, I don't think uh, for. I'm gonna definitely do a, a better test when uh, I'm gonna rig the garage to feed the house from a generator this year. I have to, it's a must. All right. So thank you very kindly for all the support for the new subscriber too, very much. Thank you very kindly too. His, uh, the comment that you are leaving uh, on the, each video are giving me the fuel to continue. Uh, despite of my English speaking abilities, I just, all right, so please do take care of yourself, all right? And uh, thank you very kindly. Cheers! And read the book! Check the oral before you start. <laughs> See you, James. <laughs>